The secret in our club is everyday training sessions. They're fantastic. High intensity, high demand and challenging. So every day we love going into training. That's players talking about the Bobo Glint manager where we heard this before. Um, thinking about Bobo Glint, it's a city of 50,000 people. So they lose two or three of their best players every year. This year they've been able to take new steps. They've played 12 more games than other teams in the league. And if they had a spare week, they were basically playing in Europe. They had a demanding season where they played AC Milan and Roma, and we all know what they did to Roma and Jose Mourinho, which is fantastic. Is he the man that Celtic are going to take to be the next manager? I think he would bring his backroom staff, and because of the backroom staff situation, I think John Kennedy, who, let's face it, has never been in a better position at Celtic than he was he was under Ange Postecoglou, being number two to to Ange Postecoglou, give him a lot, a lot of responsibility and he doesn't want his career going backwards. We'll talk about Ange Postecoglou in a minute because he has put out a statement yesterday that I didn't get to. So I'll read the statement in full. But um, you can understand why John Kennedy maybe does want to leave Celtic now because, let's face it, even under Brendan Rodgers, he wasn't a number two. Under Ange Postecoglou, he has been a number two and he's had a lot of responsibility. Sorting out trainings, you know, taking training, sorting out schedules, everything. He goes to Ange with everything, gives him all the information. Ange did come out and say when he was at Celtic, he says, I do put a, a lot of responsibility onto John. And, and you can actually see why he doesn't want to give that up if a new manager comes in and then he just puts them down to just being you know, another member of staff. He wants to maintain that position. It's a hard one for us, but is it? There's a lot, there's a lot of divided support. Um, a lot of people are saying good reasons. He should have went with Ronnie Dyler. Um, I, you know, he's done well with Celtic. He's, is it probably? It probably is the right time for him to go, to be honest. And then let's get in a brand new, fresh. Of faces and manager and backroom staff and talking about faces and manager Ange Postecoglou put out a statement and said I would like to sincerely thank everyone at the club for everything in particular Dermot, Peter and Michael the Celtic board has shown me tremendous support in every aspect of my time at Celtic I will forever be grateful for this they brought me to the club and I worked so closely and so well with them over the past two years I will always have a special relationship with them uh, maybe not anymore. Uh, they wanted they, this is an important bit. They wanted me to extend my time at Celtic. While I'm so respectful and understanding of their position, a new opportunity has been presented to me, and is one which I wanted to explore. I'll go back to the rest of the statement in a minute. So, how long has Ange Postecoglou? Let's face it. Uh, there's been talk of the, the the new deal for a while now, and I, I think that the day that DD was pictured with him was the day that I think the Celtic board became a apparently obvious that he was maybe looking at other things this summer. He'd been linked with a few jobs during the, during the season and he wasn't really interested in them. His agent's obviously been down in London and he, he has been speaking on Angie's behalf, um, as agents do, uh, behind the backs of uh, their clubs. And I think he's probably went to him, look, there is a chance that this might come off, this Spurs one. And Ange, you've got a fair play to him. He did say, "Look, I don't want to speak about anything." And after until after the cup final, <sighs> he's played Celtic like a fiddle, if you ask me. Um, holding the board off, telling them he didn't want to speak about it. He could have signed the deal with Celtic months ago, and and you know, and then Celtic would have got more compensation than what they're getting. People saying that the the contract was up on the tenth of June. It wasn't. It's a twelve months rolling contract, and we looked into the legalities of a twelve months rolling contract. So at the beginning of every month, and um, it basically starts the twelve months again. Back to the Bobo Glint manager. Obviously, they beat Roma. They, they've got the their entire club set up was set up with five mil, million euros for the year. They beat Roma eight three. But it was kind of historic and it was um, it showed you how good they are and how organised and the fact that they, they done one over um, a manager that couldn't do it at Tottenham. So how how um, Ange thinks he's going to do better than the man Mourinho, I have no idea. It says, people have been saying about this, Bobo Glint, it says over the time it, uh, they get a lot of players that come from lower levels who say they've not been good enough and this manager Kudson, seems to get them playing high intensity um, and they love going into challenge and they love going into work every day. <sighs> Back to the Ange Postecoglou one. <sighs> Whoever's going to get the Celtic manager job is obviously going to be bringing their own back team with them. So I think that's probably the reason why John Kennedy, who came out yesterday, uh, it's been said, has told Celtic that they want to. He wants to leave. Uh, 
Tell me in the comments. A lot of people are saying yesterday it's probably the right time. The former player, Celtic career was cut short in 2004. Despite that, Cel that setback, he has been at Celtic since then. So he's been at Celtic for over 25 years. Um, in fact, he came through the youth system as well. He's been through managers Ronnie Dylan, Neil Lennon, Brendan Rodgers, and, and then Ange Postecoglou. So he has that wealth of experience. And like I said, the fact that he's been a number two for the first time and he does have that responsibility, I think that's one of the reasons that he does want to go with Ange. So we wish him well. I think Celtic will try and hold on to him until they sort out of the situation. The funny thing about just now is we should have been talking about the players that Ange want to come in. And this is, this is why... I think this has been in the back of Ange's mind for a while. Um, there's not been any real leaks about any players that were potentially coming to Celtic this summer. And I think that's because Ange knew in the back of his head, obviously he told the, the, the team and the staff the type of player he was looking for. But when you seen his body language on, on the final day at the Scottish Cup, you knew, you just knew that um, he wasn't going to be hanging around. But we move on anyway. He said it was an honour to be asked to manage... Celtic. During my two years, I've given everything. I've delivered success to the supporters. Um, winning the treble at the weekend. My players and my backroom team have been brilliant for me on this journey. I think this is why I think it's going to be okay with the type of player that we're going to go for. Because let's face it, Ange Postecoglou is not going to go into Spurs and buy players at two, three, four, five million pounds. He's been going to he's going to go and spend 30, 40, 50 million pounds on players. So I think the type of level of player will stay the same at Celtic that we're going to be bringing in. So I don't know, maybe that was a bit behind his thinking. There's rumours down in Australia that he, he, he left because he didn't get the budget that he was hoping for, even though he was given a 30 million budget by Celtic. Our supporters have been magnificent to me and my family I thank them for the way they have embraced me during the past two years my ambition was also was always to give our fans and team to a team they could be proud of and people talked about I think we have achieved that Celtic is a phenomenal football club and so much more I will ever forever be a supporter of this great institution I wish everyone connected with Celtic nothing but continued success and Apostle Coglu what do you think of this statement uh, it doesn't really matter what he says in the statement. It's over and done with. We move on. This morning, there's other transferred Celtic news. Celtic are uh, opening up talks with a new deal for not uh, nothing. Matt O'Reilly faces a transfer decision as Brighton are on the snoop for him. It's going to be a big, big summer for Celtic. I mean, it was suggested that Celtic were going to lose Leela Bada and maybe O'Reilly anyway. I think the fact that we could lose Rio Hotate, Kyogo... And Jota, will, will Ange really come in for them? Is that the level of player that he really needs at Spurs? Um, I think Kyogo is, is maybe, but I think Jota might, might still be here. But then you don't know. You don't know. It's all up in the air until Celtic come out and say, this is the new manager. We should have been talking about transfers. We should have been spending June speculating on who we're getting in for the transfer window. But we're not. But life goes on. We are Celtic and we're always here. And on that note, have a great day, Celtic fans. I will do a video this afternoon if there's any new updated news, but I think it's going to be a quiet couple of days um, with just been more and more speculation. Celtic are not going to make their decision until after the Champions League final at the earliest because they're really interested in the guy from Man City. If they're holding talks with the guy from Bobo Glint, they will do a sort of dual content to see which one really wants the job and which one's the best fit for the club and who can really take us to that next level. The guy at Bobo Glint, he has had that European experience. He has won things, you know, in the league that he's in. So nobody knew Ernst Postecoglou before he came here. Nobody knew who this next Celtic manager is going to be. That's basically it.